Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for uh, tuning in to uh, our Thursday Bible study at 4 p.m. We just thank you for all the, all your prayers and all your support and all your great comments. Uh, I just want to tell you, Tuesday, Tuesday Talk with T was such a blessing, such refreshing when she said a letter to her younger self. Uh, I haven't spoke directly to her much about it, but it was so impactful. Uh, it was so, so, so much insight in that, in that particular segment of uh, a letter to my younger self. I, I tell you, a lot of emotions was poured into that, and I'm so grateful that God give us the freedom and give us the courage to say things and do things uh, with this particular ministry, uh, because it's our aim. It's our aim to really inspire people uh to be all that they can be in god uh when we when we started this ministry uh when god laid on our heart to start this ministry it was just we just want to disseminate information to help people grow in their relationship with god and, and sometimes it is the emotional it's an emotional journey it's a self-reflecting journey but it's a journey of forgiveness and not so much of forgiving others sometimes it's just a journey a journey of forgiving ourselves and growing in grace with god and learning more about of ourselves getting in touch it's an awesome it's an awesome journey uh i just had a phone call uh trying to come in but i'll get back with them in just a minute but it's an awesome journey but today i want to talk to you from the uh Psalms 3, Psalms 3, I told you we're going to be, for the next couple of weeks, we will, uh, uh, we'll be uh, endeavoring and just talking through Psalms, the, the, the book of Psalms, uh, I, I think is a very intriguing, inviting book of growth and strength and self-reflection in Psalms, and, and, and I think it's very refreshing. So today we're going to be in Psalms 3. So let's pray and then we'll get started. Psalms 3. Father, we thank you for our time together today, God. We thank you for this ministry moment, God. We pray that you give us insight, wisdom, and knowledge as we rightly divide the word of God. God, we honor you with the submission of our lives to your will, your way, and your word. So God, encourage us today. Uh, we, we, we encourage us today, God, uh, to do the things that's pleasing in your sight. For it's in Jesus' name, amen. Psalms 3. Psalms 3. We're going to talk about Psalms 3. Now, Psalms 3 has some topics in different Bibles. One topic in Psalm 3, it said, it's, it's, its topic is peace in the midst of the storm. Peace in the midst of a storm. And then uh, another version of the Bible is victory in the face of defeat. Peace in the midst of a storm and victory in the face of defeat. And, and as, we re as we read these psalms, sometimes we overlook those titles. And, uh, but this psalm, this is Psalms 3, is the first psalm with a title. But, but it, that title gives us an insight of what we're going to, began to read as we adventure through the scriptures, but it gives us insight. Peace in the midst of a storm. Has there anybody ever really needed peace in the midst of a storm? Or uh, you know that you have victory in the face of defeat? Um, this psalm is very uh, in-depth in uh, the, it's the, the life of David. It is a psalm of David. And he was fleeing from his uh, his son Absalom. Uh, we're not going to go too much deep into that. We just really want to talk about the song. We'll give some scripture references as we go through this song. But I want to get back to the titles there. Hey, Minister Thomasina, it's glad you could join. But we're in Psalms 3. And we're talking about the title of Victory in the Face of De Defeat or Peace in the Midst of the Storm. 
And this Psalm 3 is the first one with the title. Again, it's when David was fleeing from, he had fled from his own son Absalom. And the reason I point out the titles because these titles come from the canon of the Hebrew text. How many of you know that the Bible has been translated into different versions? But it's the, it, it, these titles are, are in the canon of the Hebrews text. So, or the Hebrews, or Hebrew Bible. So we ought to take them, take those titles, uh, seriously as we read the scripture. Take the titles seriously as we begin to look at uh, what is recorded in the psalm itself. But the title gives us an insight of what we're going to be, what you're going to be, in, uh, what you're going to be experiencing as you read through the psalm. So don't overlook the, those small things. And it gives us an insight of, of David fleeing from his son Absalom. And the events are recorded in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 15 through 18. And I'm, we're not going to go there. But it, it, but the events that are behind this song is in Second Samuel chapter fifteen through eighteen. But we want to, the heart of David. The heart of David uh, at the most difficult time is recorded in this song. The heart of David in the most difficult time is recorded in Psalms three. That's reading this title: Peace in the midst of the storm, or victory in the face of defeat. So let's look at it. Let's look at it. It says, verses 1 and 2 of the Psalms 3 said, Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. Selah. Can you imagine? Hey, Sister Joyce, can you imagine when you're in the midst of your trials and tribulations that you that many people are saying that God, not even God will help you not even God will help you uh so at the right end of this psalm David was in a great deal of trouble and his own son led uh, led what seems to be a successful rebellion against him and, and many of his previous friends and associates forsook him and joined the ranks of those who troubled him. And isn't it amazing that some people that was once on your side turn against you? And this is all recorded in Second Samuel chapter fifteen, verse thirteen. Second Samuel chapter fifteen, verse thirteen. So it seemed like uh, David's son has the upper hand on him, and many that knew David um, had forsook him and joined those that troubled him. And they were even saying that there was no help, that not even God would help him. David's situation was so bad that many felt that he was beyond God's help. Man, can you imagine? Can you imagine those who said this probably didn't feel that God was able to help David. They probably felt that God was unwilling to help David. Not that he couldn't, but they felt like, God was unwilling to help him. They looked at David's past sins and figured this is all what he deserves from God. See, sometimes people will look at your past and they'll try to judge you uh, of what you're going through or what your situation, and they'll try to put, put justification with what you're going through by your past life. But aren't we glad that God is not like that? They even said that there is no help for him even in God. I, that is that is all that that's an awesome uh, awful place to be in. When people are telling you that not even God will help you just because of what you did in the past. So they were judging David's situ present situation on the things that led up, things that led up to where he is today. Uh, Shamiel was one, was an example of someone who said that God was against David. And that Shamiel is a, 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 a character in the Bible. And he was set, he was getting what he deserved. He said that God was against David. He was getting what he would deserve. Now this is in 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7 through 8. 
I'm not making it up. It's in the Bible. I'm in the Bible. This thought was most painful for all for, uh, of all for David. Can you imagine people feeding into your spirit that not even God will help you? The thought that God might be against him and that there was no help in God. Now that that's a bad place to be in when you feel when you feel like not even God will help you. That's a bad place when when you feel like even God has has turned against you. There's nowhere else to go. There's nowhere else to go. If all the trials which come from from heaven and all the temptation that uh, sins from hell, God does not tempt us. He may try us, but he doesn't tempt us. So the trials come from heaven, temptations come from hell, and all the crosses which arise from the earth, all the crosses that we have to bear, the different situations, could be mixed and pressed together. They would not make a trial so terrible and so that which this which is contained in this verse. All the trials and tribulations that we bear, it comes to a head. In the Psalms 3, it is most bitter of all afflictions to be led to fear that there is no help in God. That is that is the, the greatest degree of hopelessness when we feel like there is no help even in God. Okay, I, I would just I wouldn't even think about going through life or going through a situation knowing that not even God would help me get through that situation. But we're going to talk more about that. And then the, word, then the last thing in that scripture says, Selah. Selah the, is the idea in the Hebrew for this word. It, it, it occurs 74 times in the Old Testament. It is for a pause. Most people think it speaks of a reflective pause, a pause to meditate on the word just spoken. It, it may also be a musical instruction for a musical interlude or some, some kind. See, sometimes we have to really stop. Hey, Ebony, we have to really stop and think about what is being said to us and, 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 and give some insight to it. See, because one of, one of the things I love about David as I study David, David, uh, when he did something, he admitted it. When he didn't do something, he, he he admitted it. But he was always truthful in what he did. Uh, and, and he took ownership for his shortcomings. So why I say that? Because one of the things we must do, and we're going to learn in the Psalms, is that we have to acknowledge our adversity. We have to acknowledge our adversities. See, sometimes, you know, you get these people that you call on the phone and they never have nothing going wrong. I'm blessed and highly favored, too blessed to be stressed. I, look, I'm blessed and there have been some times I've been stressed. I am blessed and highly favored, but I have had some adversities in my life. So we have to be willing to admit adversities, admit when we're having problems. Like the psalmist, we encounter challenges. Like David, we encounter challenges and we encounter opposition in various forms. It is essential. You got to get this. It is essential to acknowledge these difficulties rather than deny or ignore them. We got to acknowledge them. We have to acknowledge them. And by honestly confronting our struggles, we can seek God's Seek God for his help and guide us in overcoming them. You, 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 hey, Brother Bryce, how you doing? But we got to be honest about it because the scripture tells us it's in our weakness that God's strength, his strength is made perfect. So if we never acknowledge that we have trials, then we're acknowledging that we don't need God. So we have to acknowledge it. So in verse 1 and 2, we see where David is talking about. David is talking about how many have come against him, how, how the number has increased, and that they are, they are saying, they are saying that there is no help even in God. So he took a moment to pause and reflect upon 
what they were saying to gather himself. He, he, he had to take a moment to gather himself before he began to react to what they were saying. So as he gathered himself, we look at verses 3 and 4 of the Psalms. Verses 3 and 4 of the psalm. Now David just got saying how many people are against him who rise up, who have rise up against him. And they even say that there is no help even in God for him. But then verse 3, as he paused and gathered himself, this is what David says in verse 3 and 4. 3 and 4. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. Selah. Yeah, man, isn't that awesome? When David took that moment to pause and, the, and, and that reflective moment, and then he, he began to think about the goodness of God and the faithfulness of God, regardless of what people, who was coming against him, regardless of what people were saying, David began to speak to his God. He said, but you, O Lord, are my shield. You are a shield for me. Though many said there was no help for him in God, David knew that God was his shield. That's what we got to get. Sometimes we we so quick to answer what people are saying that we forget that we just need to talk to the one who's able to get us through. We waste more time trying to do a rebuttal to what they said instead of talking to the one that we know who is faithful. Am I right? So that's what David, David said. Oh Lord, you are my seal. Regardless of what they say. Even many others couldn't shake David's confidence in God's love and help. See, that's what we got to get. We got to get to regardless of what people are saying. And regardless of what situation we are facing. We have confidence and nothing can shake our confidence and our faith in God and his love and know that he will help us. We got to get there. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. No height, no depth, no things to come, no things past. Nothing. When we're under attack from a, from a cunning and ruthless enemy, we got to be like David. You got to say, I need a shield. David needed a shield. He knew that God was his shield. This wasn't a prayer of asking God to fulfill this. This is a strong declaration of fact. David wasn't asking God. He wasn't even reminding God. He was reminding himself. You, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. Oh, that's what we got to begin to speak. Speak strength into our situation. Speak, we got to begin to speak life into our dead situation. He wasn't asking God. He was just reminding himself and, 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 and declaring his confidence that God, who God was in his life. He said, you are my shield. He said, you are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. <laughs> Man. My glory and the one who lifts up my head. God was more than David's protection. He was also the one who put David on higher ground. Lifting his head and showing him glory. There was nothing glorious or head lifting in David's circumstance, but there was in his God. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? Sometimes our circumstance can be ugly, but God is a lifter of our head. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O ye gates. See, that's what David just began to look to the heavens, which come, which, which come with all his help, knowing his help comes from the Lord. And David said, you are the lifter of my head. You are the one who lift up my head. Not these people that's talking. You are the one. And, and, and he says, uh, see, people find glory in all sorts of things. Uh, 
fame, power, prestige, or possession. But David found his glory in the Lord. He found his glory in the Lord. Y'all got to get that. He said, oh, my soul has thou made God thy glory. He said, my soul, oh, my soul have made God my glory. God is my glory. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers out of them all. You're right, Sister Thomasina. We got to remember that. And people find glory in all sorts of things. But David found his glory in the Lord. In the midst of all our bad situations or circumstances, we got to know that there will be glory after that circumstance. And that glory is in God. Others boast of their wealth, their beauty, their position, their achievement. But they do not find in God what they find in those things. Those things, wealth and beauty, is fleeting. It's fleeting. But 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 in God, we can find need. We have a little power glimpse. So if I went off for a minute, I'm back. We can find the glory that we need. Then David says, I cried to the Lord with my voice. I cried to the Lord with my voice. Listen. Surely silent prayers are heard. Yes, but most children of God often find that even in secret, in the private moments, that we pray better when we pray aloud. Ooh, we pray better when we pray aloud than we do when we utter no vocal sound. I, I, look, it's, it's, a, it's something about putting it in the atmosphere. It's about captivating the atmosphere with the word of God, with the presence of God. It, it, it's something about captivating the atmosphere, putting the right vibes, the right spirit in the atmosphere, a spirit of, uh, uh, that will overcome all situations and circumstances. So David said, I cried to the Lord with my voice. And let me tell you something. If you have never cried to the Lord, keep on living. Because there will be some circumstances and some situations that come into your life. You, you can't help but open your mouth. You can't help but cry out to the Lord. You know, back in the day, uh, we don't say it much as like we do today. But back in the day, there used to be a phrase that they say all the time. Lord, have mercy. I thought they were saying have mercy. But they were saying, Lord, have mercy. But they just cut it short. Lord, have mercy. Because they were crying out to the Lord. Because they needed his presence and they needed it immediately. So David cried to the Lord with, my, with his voice. He opened up his mouth. And then with, this is what David said. And he heard me from his holy hill. And he heard me from his holy hill. Now God can hear silent prayer. But I come to tell you there's power in opening up your mouth. That's power. And he said, and he heard me from his holy hill. Others say that God wanted nothing to do with David, but he could gloriously say he heard me. God didn't want to have, was not going to even help David. David declared he heard me. See, you can't go on what they say. You got to go on what you know. Y'all get what I'm saying? Don't you let people talk you out of what you know. Am I right? Because they don't want you to come out your mess. But you got to cry to the Lord. And you got to know with confidence that God heard you. Not only did he hear you, but the answer is on the way. See, though Absalom took over Jerusalem and forced David out of the capital, David knew that it wasn't Absalom's throne on God's holy hill. The Lord himself still held that ground and would hear and help David from his holy hill. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just because the, some people may have pushed you out of territory, God still owns the territory. God is still on the throne. God is still on his holy hill. We can never move God out of his holy place. And, and we got to understand, this scripture comes in to remind me that Remember that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. See, our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in the Lord for the pulling down of strongholds. 
and bring every cap, every thought into captivity unto the obedience of God. Am I right? So David knew that God still on the throne. He's still enthroned on his holy hill. And the Lord himself still held that ground and would bear up and help David from his holy hill. See, trusting, just come with, trusting in God's protection. We got to learn how to trust in God's protection. That's what the scripture is showing us through, through David. Remember, peace in the midst of a storm, victory in the face of defeat. When we trust in God's protection, despite the overwhelming odds, David found solace in God's promises to shield and safeguard him. See, and that's what we got to do. We got to find, hey, Sister Thomasina, we got to begin to trust in God's protection, regardless of what's coming at a, coming against us. We got to be like David and learn how to trust in God's protection and know that God and trust his promises that they are true. See, we have to learn God's protection and strength, that God will be our protection and our strength in times of trouble. He's a very present help in time of trouble, trusting that he is with us and will provide the support that we need. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So when you're going through adverse situations, when you're going, when it seems like things are mounting up against you, trust in God's protection. He's still on the throne. He's still able. Can I say it like I normally say? The same God that brought you through the last time will be the same God that bring you through this time. So you got to trust in that protection. You got to learn. You got to learn to lean on. Lean on God's protection and find that strength in the times of trouble. Trust in him that he's going to be with us and, 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 and he will provide the support that we need. See, and we can find hope. We can find hope in God's faithfulness. We can find hope in God's faithfulness. If we just look at God's track record, we can find hope. Even when others doubt or question God's intervention, David remains steadfast in his faith, confident in God's ability to deliver him. Can we do the same thing? Uh, are we willing to do the same thing? That regardless of what we're facing, regardless of what people are saying, regardless of how people, other people may doubt it, we got to remain steadfast in God's faithfulness, not wavering, knowing that God will do just what he said he would do. We can draw hope from God's past faithfulness and the assurance of his promises knowing that he's always working for our good. All things are working together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Now, y'all hear what I'm saying? We, we can find that. We can draw hope and that strength from God's faithfulness. God has never disappointed us. God said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And, and, and you got to understand that we can find that blessed assurance, am I right, in, in, in trusting God. So let, let's, let's go on. Verses 5 and 6. Listen, this is, God talks about, God. David is talking about God's blessing. Now this really blessed me. Verses 5 and 6. He says, I lay down and I slept. I lay down and slept. I awoke. For the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of the 10,000 of people who have set themselves against me all around. Listen, it, listen, did y'all hear what I just said? David says, I lay down and slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. Man. How many times have we been in trials and tribulations or been under some deep stress that we couldn't even sleep? We tossed and turned. But David used both as evidence of God's blessing. He used sleep. Sleep was a blessing. Because David was under such intense pressure from the circumstances of Absalom's rebellion 
but he was able to sleep. Under any other circumstances, sleep would have been impossible. But David slept. Okay. Man, that blessed me. David slept in the face of, he said, I lay down and slept. Sweet sleep. I woke for the Lord sustained me. So sleep was a blessing. See, God will give you that peace in the midst of storm. In the midst of a storm. God will let you see victory in the midst of defeat. He said, I lay down and slept. So that was a blessing. But then he said, I woke up. What another blessing. He said, I woke the next day. Because many wondered if David would live to see a new day. Can y'all get what I'm saying? Wow. Because sometimes pressure can kill us. Uh, Sometimes worry can kill us. But David said, I had two blessings. I was able to sleep and I was able to wake up. So let me tell you something. And I, I we, you hear this all the time. If you don't have a reason to praise God, let me give you one. He woke you up this morning. And if he woke you up, then he had a reason for waking you up. So regardless of what you have to face in this day, God has already gone before you and made a crooked way straight. Y'all got to get what I'm saying. David said, I slept in the midst when I shouldn't have been sleeping. This was, should, It should have been impossible for me to get some rest, but I was able to sleep. And then God woke me up again to see another day. What a blessing. What a blessing. Truly, it must have been a soft pillow, indeed, that could make him forget his danger. Can you imagine? <laughs> it had to be, it only had to be the hands of God that would, could, could rock him to sleep and make him forget his dangers. And then, who, and of, of, of those who were so disloyal, the disloyal the army that was hunting him down, he was being hunted and wanted to be killed. But David was able to sleep. God sustains us in our sleep. God sustains us in our sleep. But we take it for granted. We take it for granted. Granted. Think of it. You are asleep. Unconscious. Dead to the world. Yet you breathe. Your heart still pumps. Your organs still operate. Wow. And if God can sustain us through in the midst of that, you know, we lie down in the image of death, as the old folks say. Uh, but the same God that sustains us in our sleep will sustain us in our difficult moments. If he can still orchestrate all things to work right and then wake us up the next day, God can get us through any situation and circumstance. He's that sustaining God. If he can sustain me when I'm laying is in the image of death and then can make everything still work right. As I understand what the people, the older generation say. But see, I'm getting old, but I still say the older generation, they woke me up with a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. I'm still closed in my right mind. That's from a sustaining God. A sustaining God. Blood still running warm in my body. That's a sustaining God. And if he can sustain us in that, in that state of uh, 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 imagery of death, he can sustain us through any situation or circumstance or difficulty that comes about in our life. That's right, Jane. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Then David went on to say, went on to say, I will not be afraid of 10,000 of people. 10,000 of people. How many times we get scared over one or two people? David said, I will not be afraid of the 10,000 of people. With God sustaining him, David could stand against any foe. Before it was written, David knew the truth of Romans 8 and 31. If God be for us, Oh, who can be against us? Hallelujah. If God be for us, who can be against us? So David says, David says, 
I will not be afraid of the 10,000 who has set themselves against me all around, all around. The, David said, the, the, they think they got me surrounded, but I'm surrounded by God. Uh, he said, they think they got me surrounded, but I'm surrounded by God. So how did David get there? Well, he prayed. He prayed. So prayer was a source of comfort. David act of calling out the Lord reflects a reliance on prayer as a meaning of finding comfort and solace in the midst of his difficulty. Remember he said, but you, O Lord, that's a prayer when he's saying, but you, O Lord. So David found comfort and solace in praying to God and reliance. It, it reflects that he relied on God and he found that comfort in God and found peace in the midst of his difficult times. See, we too, we too can turn to prayer as a way to express our concerns and seek God's guidance and ask for his intervention, his divine intervention in our lives. Yeah, our prayer life, our prayer life. And we, and we pray because we're trusting in God's provisions. We pray because we're trusting in God's provision. The David, the psalmist's ability to lie down and sleep peacefully demonstrates his trust in God's sustaining power. There, there often been a thing said, if God, if God is up on the case, I'm going to go ahead and go to sleep. Why are we both up? So if God is on the case, we can get some rest. But that the, the trusting in God's provision, it, 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 that gives us the ability to rest and find peace in the midst of our storm, knowing that God will sustain us. Even in the midst of trouble and uncertainty, we can find rest in God. We can find rest in God's care, knowing that he is watching over us and providing for our needs. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. He believe, you know, it talks about He leadeth me beside the still waters. I'm getting so excited that I'm getting tired, Tom. But that's resting time. That's resting time. See, uh, God, we can overcome fear by faith. We can overcome. Our fear through faith. Despite, despite facing overwhelming odds, David declares that David declares uh, and refused to succumb to fear. David is making a declaration that he will not give in to fear. His trust in God's protection enable him to face his enemies with confidence and courage. We can, we can be the same way. We can overcome fear by placing our trust in God's promises and his presence. Did you get what I'm saying? His promises and his presence, knowing that he is greater than any challenge that we may encounter. His promises and his presence. That's the reason we got we to gotta be sensitive to the presence of God. We got to walk in the spirit of God. We got to walk in the presence of God. We got we got to you know the back in the day they used to sing a song and 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 I I didn't think it was real biblical back then, but it makes a little bit more sense. You have to take the Lord with you everywhere you go. You y'all remember that song? You ought to take the Lord with you everywhere you go. I, I get it. I get it. I want God to be with me. I, I want God to be with me on my job, in my home, in my car. I want his presence to be with me. So I want to feel the presence of God because I know that in the presence of God, that there are a multitude of blessings. It's in the presence of God. I have that confidence and that strength that I know that he's there and he's going to protect me. And there's nothing greater than having the presence of God in your life. Well, verses 7 and 8, the last two. Verse 7 and 8 of the Psalms 3. He says, it says, Arise, O Lord. Save me, O my God. 
for you have struck all my enemies on their cheekbone. Ha! You y'all gotta get that. Oh, arise, O oh Lord, save me, O oh my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessings is upon your people, Selah. Listen, that, that was an interesting, interesting uh, selection of words. Interesting selection of words. David's mind was on both what he trusted God to do. That's where his mind was. His mind was on both. Save me. Oh, my God. Then it was not only on what he wanted God to do, but what God has already done. He said what God, what God had done was struck all my enemies on their cheekbone. Broke, broke the teeth of the ungodly. Wow. We're going we're gonna to look at that a little bit. Arise, O oh Lord. This recall the words of, of, of Numbers chapter 10, verse 35. Numbers chapter 10, verse 35, where Moses used the phrase, as the children of Israel broke camp in the wilderness. It was a military phrase calling on God to go forth uh, and to both defend Israel and lead them to victory. Arise, O Lord. Arise. Go before me, God. Arise, O oh God. Present victory before me, God. Give me that peace in the midst of the storm. Broken the teeth of the ungodly. Now, I found that very interesting. This is a vivid metaphor as you also used in Psalms 58 and 6. This is a vivid metaphor always you also used in Psalms 58 and 6. It speaks of the total domination and defeat of the enemy. David looked for protection in the Psalms, but more than the protection, he looked for victory. In other words, in other words, let me try to bring it to where we can get this. When he says, when he talks about you, you have struck them on their cheekbone and that you have broken the teeth of the ungodly. In other words, it's like a slap in their face. It's, it's like a slap in their face of all the things that they have said that God would not do. It, it, it's like, you know, God said, okay. You know how he just slapped them in their face with, made them eat their own words. Totally, to me, that's total humiliation. Total humiliation is to be slapped in the face uh, uh, for something you said against God. That's total humiliation, and, and that's victory. It wasn't enough for David to survive the threat to the kingdom. He had to be victorious over the threat, and he would be with the blessings of God. Do y'all get what I'm saying? Like, have we ever never said that when... Have we ever told, have you ever told somebody when they said something to you, or you've been good to them, you say, oh, that's a slap in the face. In other words, you're trying to say that, you know, th that was total humiliation. That was a slap in the face, totally. But that's what God did to these people. He totally humiliated them. He totally humiliated them. And not only, not so much of, yeah, David, David had some uh, torrid past, but when they begin to speak about what God can and can't do, then you're really stepping out of line. So David says, you, you, you struck him in the face. You broke their teeth. Why? This is why. Because salvation belongs to the Lord. Who can, you know, it's like me trying to tell God who, who, he, who he can save or who he can't save. Salvation belongs to the Lord. You know, we have to be careful who we who we speak against that God can't won't save them or God won't move in their life. We need to be careful because salvation belongs to the Lord. He saves who he want to save. He intervenes in whose life he want to intervene. He, he, he does what he wants to do. He's sovereign. 
He's a sovereign God. You know, the church that got to the point where we pretty well try to decide who God can save or who going to heaven and who going to hell. Listen, I was having this conversation uh, with a young lady on the phone yesterday and we was talking about heaven and hell and we was talking about how people try to decide on who going to heaven and who going to hell. I, I said, well, it's often been said that some people are going to be in heaven that you didn't think was going to be in heaven. And some people not going to be in heaven that you thought was going to be in heaven. You know what I told her? I said, I don't care either way. I just want to be present to witness it. And she, she said, oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I just want to be in heaven. It don't matter. I want people to make it, but I just want to be present. I don't, I don't want to be one of them outside. So, but salvation belongs to the Lord. And, and we as a body of believers got to get back to that. David understood that salvation, both in the ultimate and the immediate sense, was God's property. It isn't the property of anyone, any nation, any sect, but it belongs to the Lord. It belongs to God solely. To, say, to be saved, one must deal with the Lord himself. One must deal with the Lord himself. Then he said, your blessings is upon your people. This showed David's heart in a time of personal calamity. This is important too. David wasn't only concerned for God's hand upon himself, but he was concerned that God, for all of God's people, for all, excuse me, for all of God's people, he didn't just pray for preservation and victory in a trial with Absalom just for his own sake, but because it was best for the nation. He was praying what was best for the nation. Listen, as, the, as believers, we got we to gotta begin to pray what's best for the kingdom of God. Not just for our own comfort, our own deliverance, but what's best for the kingdom of God. We got to pray for those that despitefully use us. We got to learn to forgive. So we got to have that. That is not just about ourselves, but it's about all those that are in the kingdom of God. What's best for the kingdom of God. That's one of the things wrong with this country now. It's so divided because people only want what they think is right and not what's best for the nation. And then we want to pray for God to intervene. But God will do what God wants to do, not only in us, but in this nation. Okay? What we have to do is we have to continue in boldness in prayer. We got to continue to be bold in our prayer life. Hey, Sister Robin, we got to be continue to be bold in our prayer life. David's plea for God to arise and act demonstrates boldness in prayer. Y'all, y'all hear what I'm saying? His, 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 when he asks God to arise and act demonstrates boldness in prayer. Uh, we got to quit he being hesitant to ask God for divine intervention. But instead, approach God with confidence and, and believing in his power to bring about deliverance. We got to be quit being hesitant uh, and, and quit acting like we got everything under control. Yeah, I know you're blessed and highly favored, but I need the Lord each and every day, every minute, every second, every hour of the day. So we got to be bold in our prayer. We got to approach the throne of grace with confidence that God will do just what he said he will do. We got to boldly bring our concerns to God and our requests before God, trusting in his ability to answer according to his will. Answer according to his, his will. We serve a prayer hearing and answering God. We serve a prayer hearing and answering God. But we got to go boldly before the throne of grace. Not God, if you can. God, I know you can. I know you can. I know what your word said. It is written, God. We got to go boldly. 
We got to go boldly. But then we got to trust in God's justice. We got to trust in God's justice. As we go boldly to the throne, we got to trust in God's justice. See, David's desire for God to strike their enemies and break their teeth of the wicked reflects on a trust in God's justice. Uh, you hear what I'm saying? That you're right. Uh, 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 yeah, we got to. You're right, Brother Michael. In his will, we pray that his will be done. His will be done. The uh, Because guess what? Thank you, Brother Michael. Because sometimes we ask God for smaller things and God want to give us much bigger things. And it's in his will. And it, it's not what I will, but it's in what, what he wills that's what's best for the overall picture. But we got to trust in God's justice. You got to believe that God will not let actions of the wicked go unpunished. You got to, now, you got to hear what I said. You got to believe that God will not let the actions of the wicked go unpunished, but will ultimately bring about justice and vindication for his people, for his people. So that means that we must have repent. That means we need to repent. We got to remember that we have to repent of our wrongdoing. We have to repent and ask God for that forgiveness because we trust in God's justice. He is just rain on the, uh, he just to rain on the, uh, the good and the bad. His justice is going to rain. Okay. Listen, likewise, we can trust God's righteous judgment and rest assured that he will deal justly with those who oppose his purpose. We got to know that. You got to know that. You're right, Ebony. We have to be, we have to be obedient to him, uh, uh, to have that, that, yeah, that confidence. You're right. We have to be obedient to him to have that confidence that we trust in God's just, justice. The righteousness of God will fall on the just as well as the unjust. And we rest assured that he would just deal justly with those who oppose him. Listen, this is the last thing I'm going to tell you, then I'm, I'm out of here. We have to have an assurance of deliverance. A assurance of deliverance. See, this is in affirming that deliverance will come from the Lord. David expressed confidence in God's ability to rescue him from his trouble. Yeah, in this psalm, David... He he expressed confidence in knowing that uh, God had the ability to rescue him in his trouble. He recognized the ultimate victory rest in God's hand. He, he y'all got to get that. He realized that ultimate victory rest in God's hand, and he trusted in God's faithfulness to come to his aid. We have to learn to find that assurance in God's promises. We have to find that assurance that God can deliver. Knowing that he's always working for the good of his people. Oh, y'all get what I'm saying? This Psalms 3 blessed me. It blessed me because it gave, showed me about peace in the midst of a storm. Victory in the face of defeat. How we can find rest in the Lord. But we got to have that confidence in God. We got to go boldly to God in prayer. We got to trust in the confidence of, that God will be a just God, that his will is, 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 shall be done. And that we're not just praying for ourselves, but we're praying for what is the greater good for the kingdom of God. And we got to know that God will, God will come to our rescue and deliver us. This is how strongholds get broken in our lives. This how this is how generational curses get broke, broken in our lives. Because we know that God's able and we go with confidence. We go humbly, but we go with boldness to the throne of God. Boldness to the throne of God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We go with boldness to the throne of God. And so when you find yourself in the midst of overwhelming trouble or overwhelming distress, 
Talk to the Lord. You are my shield. You are my buckler. You are, you are the Lord. You are the God of salvation. You are my deliverer. And, and, and begin to cry out to God and see when he come to your rescue. Cry out with confidence. Regardless of what they are saying, you got to know that you know that you know who God is in your life. That's, that's what I got out of Psalms 3. And it blessed me. Uh, again, we're going to be talking to and teaching through the Psalms the next couple of weeks. So if there's a particular Psalm that you want me to cover, please put it in the comment sections. I have a couple already that I'm going to get to. But they're a little bit further down. I know somebody had put Psalms 27. Somebody had put Psalms 121. I won't go number by number. But as God lead me, I will pick some out. If nobody else give me some that you want to talk about. But as God lead me. But I thank God he led me to Psalms 3 today. That really blessed my soul. That regardless of who comes against you. If God be for you. Who can be against you? And you got to know with confidence that God is with you. But we got to be acceptance of his will, not what we want, but his will. Thank you, Brother James. I, I appreciate you enjoying the teaching. I, I just give God all the glory for all that he is doing through devoted to him and he's doing through us. God is there for us. We just have to acknowledge that we need him. Well, let's pray. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus we come before you today. God, we lay everything at your feet, God. Every care, every concern, every situation, every circumstance. God, we lay it at your feet. Knowing that you are a deliverer, you are a healer. God, you are the answer to all the, all the situations and circumstances in our life. God, we just want the greater good to be manifested, not only in us, but in those that are surrounded by us. God, we, we want your presence. God, we, 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 we want you to be with us and just feel your presence wherever we go, God. We want to be obedient to your word. We want to be able to, God, to walk in that confidence, God. And when you know your word, say so you'll never leave us, nor forsake us. So, God, we walk in that confidence today. We know that all sickness is not unto death. We walk in that confidence today. God, we know what the enemy meant for our bad. You are turning to our good. We walk in that confidence today. God, we walk in the confidence that your word will not come back void. It will accomplish that what you set it out to do. So God, we simply going to rest in you. We're going to rest in your glory. God, we're going to rest in your presence. And you, we know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, you will wake us up into a new day, God. And if we don't wake up, God, it's all is still well because we know we will be in your presence. So God, give us that peace. Give us that strength. Give us that victory in the face of our defeat. God, we just glorify you in all that we do. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day. See you next week. Thank you again for tuning in and being with us on this Bible study devoted to him. Amen. Have a blessed evening.